Welcome to Syntax today. We are live at GitHub Universe, and we have Tanner Lindsley in look the box. The bo- yes, look who we have Wandering here. Wandering the floor. Yeah. Hello, hello. Taking all the merch, drinking all the drinks. I don't have that Frame. low. You know that low range you've got. Yeah, on yours? yeah. I, do. Oh, I don't yeah. have that either. I'm jealous. What's yeah. up? Now I got the. Hey, hey guys! You like <laughs> JavaScript? Yeah. Uh, hey, I got, got yeah. some cool <laughs> JavaScript tips for you. <laughs> wow, that's great, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> uh, so Tanner uh, is the creator of Tanstack. Everything. Um, you've probably used Tanstack Query. Almost everything. Uh, Tanstack, almost everything. This is the first this? year that libraries are out that I didn't create. That you haven't even touched mm, before. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's, uh, it's more of a Tanstack team now, right? Yeah, team absolutely. Stack. You guys got like lots of... <laughs> Lots of fun. We had Corbin on the podcast what, maybe a year, year and a half ago, and he was telling us about how you write libraries to work with multiple things. Yeah. Yeah, it's That's so hard. funny. Yeah, when I talked to Corbin at the thing, I was like, I think it was about like four years ago we had you on the pod. I looked it up. It was 2024. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> four years yeah. ago, yeah. Time flies. Yeah, right. Since we've last talked, I know that you're cooking on stuff right now, and we're going to have you on for our proper podcast, but we thought we would just grab you into to chit-chat. But, like, you've been you've been cooking, right? Like, you've, uh, what have you been working on? Yeah, we've been cooking some fun stuff. I have been heads down on Tansac Start yeah. and, and Router lately. Me and Manuel Schiller have mostly been working on that. Sam Willis and Kyle Matthews from Electric have been putting a ton of work into... Tanstack DB. Oh, that's so that's your like sync engine local yeah. local first. Scott absolutely loves this stuff. Oh yeah. We were talking about it last night. Yeah, yeah like yeah, like yeah. if I wasn't doing router and start, like yeah. that, I would be working on that because I'm just so excited about it. Tell us about about like what that is. So it it is like a sync engine, but it's only it's only the client part of it. So you, you set up what we call collections. Yeah. And they're basically tables. And you can you can then query those collections using like a queries and text that you're used to from like Drizzle or like it's it's a first class query engine. You know, you can do joins, you can do where clauses, you can do really fun, tricky things. And that's all powered by this differential data flow system behind the scenes in the browser. So it's really, really fast to run these queries on these collections. Okay. But those collections can be powered agnostically. So you could shove data into those from React Query, from a WebSocket, from IndexedDB. So you can you can push data into these collections from anywhere. Okay. So it's like you get to start building your own sync engine. Yeah. Which is what makes it incrementally adoptable. Yeah. Which is yeah. very important. That's what we were talking about with Zero. Yeah. Which is what I'm using for everything. You are have to have either your Postgres set up already uh, and and be committed to that. Or you have to build from scratch. Yeah. So that incremental adoption piece is much more difficult. Oh when, man. With the yeah. syntax side, it wouldn't be possible because we're not on Postgres unless yeah. yeah, we moved to Postgres. One of the benefits, if we we peel back, one of the benefits to to Tanstack query is that like you just needed an a sync function. Yeah. You know? And you didn't it's not like it had to be a fetch call, not like it had to be this like weird signature yep. or whatever. It just needs to be an asynchronous function and past that you don't give a shit. How what happens? Is that the same thing with the sync engine? Same spiritual idea. Yeah. Yeah. You do need a little bit more. Okay. So you, yes, you need async functions to, you know, you need to be able to push your data into the collection. Yep. And that can happen through a REST call setup you've got. Like you can use React Query to push data in there. Okay. Or you can set up a, a socket or a live stream of events coming in. So that's the first thing you need is to be able to push data in. The second thing you need is it it is schema based because you need to be able to have strict type safety, but not just that. You need to be able to query this stuff like a table and do joins on IDs and joins on things. So oh, yeah. it takes a schema. So it's it's not relational, but you can treat it like that. So let's see, data, schema, that's really it. That's all you need. Yeah. Man, and I think one thing that people really don't realize is just how transformative the speed can be oh. when you're working in these local cache systems. It is so fast. And I, I feel like I'm always constantly talking about this. Yeah. And like a year from now, people are going to be like, this is the I feel the like fastest you're, you've been thing. so early to this stuff and not everyone realizes yeah, because how it good it is. It's so shockingly fast. That's why I'm excited for 
the Tanstack DB. I'm excited for this incremental adoption. I would love to use it on syntax. Uh, and like, just know that like that that speed in which you're able to load things from your local data cache with with syncing happening behind the scenes or whatever that process is it is transformational. Uh, what does the actual syncing look like? You know, like I, I understand like querying, you're pulling data down, but like what happens when you need to like have a mutation or whatever? <clears throat> so the transaction. There's, there's a transaction framework built into it. Okay. And a lot of that is automatic. So when you work with individual collections, you know, you're doing an insert or a deletion or, or an update. A lot of those transactions are managed for you around kind of these common actions you can take. Yeah. yeah. And all you have to do is supply the implementation details of those common actions. And you can also create your own. But like insert, update, and delete, you you just supply the implementation details for those. So you may have a collection that's powered by a really old crappy REST API. Yeah. And when you call those three functions, you got to go in and actually make a fetch call with the data and do the thing, right? But once you set that up one time, you can then go back to your, your business logic, your application layer, and you can interact with that collection as yeah. if it's synchronous. You can just mutate properties. You can delete and add things. And behind the scenes, it's batching and doing all those fetch calls for you. And that gives you easy control over permissions and stuff like that because you're not changing your API, right? right. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a problem that I know Zero has been trying to solve in different ways of yeah. permissions, of which if you're not having to adopt a whole new thing, right? Yeah. yeah you're just using your API. And which, so. and, and I got a rep electric, yeah. which is where Kyle and, and Sam are from. Yeah, Kyle's been on that for a, a while yeah. now, yeah. But by using uh, long polling, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get to you get to reutilize all your normal authentication flows because it's just REST. It's just, it's just HTTP, right? Yeah. So you don't have to invent something new for sockets and, and yeah. go through Beautiful. kind of that charade. I'm excited to try that out. Let's switch gears a little bit. Next.js last week launched, Next.js 16 launched a workflow with the use workflow directive, which is a little bit magic, right? Um, I haven't really caught up with what everybody's saying about it, but I know I know you've had some thoughts on it. Can you give us the scoop as to what you think about that? The workflow stuff itself is actually really exciting. Yeah. Like we, we've got to be honest with ourselves that like durable execution is really exciting. Yeah. Uh, no matter what you're using. So like... Maybe pause just for a second. Yeah. Like the idea with the for the audience listening, the idea with a, a workflow is that you can like you can have an async function and you can just like pause that function for forty two days. Yeah. Or you can have like multiple steps or you can say like come back and sleep for thirty minutes and, and come back and check if this thing and it's really cool. Like I'm I've used the Cloudflare durable objects and their workflow. Big fan of that. And like all of your memory, all of your variables, all of that sort of just like is reinstated. Yeah. Uh, there's like ingest, there's a couple of like other startups in that space. So it's it's great, especially for for agents where you're like come back in, in half an hour, but you don't have to like save your variables to database or anything like that. So it's yeah. just like seals it up but it's a hot space and yeah it's, and it's useful it's really cool to do that yeah and if you want to see all of the errors in your application you'll want to check out sentry at sentry.io forward slash syntax you don't want a production application out there that well you have no visibility into in case something is blowing up and you might not even know it so head on over to sentry.io forward slash syntax again we've been using this tool for a long time and it totally rules all right I think the interesting part that kind of is trending a lot on Twitter and social media these the last few days has been around their usage of directives yeah. for kind of setting that up. And on, on one hand, you look at it and it's like, it, it does look really innovative and cool to be like, oh, look what you had to do with these other APIs and nesting things in functions and, and setting them up to, to be resilient. Yeah. Uh, we've replaced all that with just these kind of magic directives. So on one hand, it does look really great and, and man, it sells well. Even when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, that looks really cool. Yeah. But for me personally, I, I, I think that we kind of have a directive problem just we're getting a little obsessive about using them for everything. And yeah. So I, I decided to collect some of my thoughts on directives in general, uh, not just about use workflow, but just about all of the directives that we've kind of chosen to adopt over the last couple of years and, mm -hmm. and put them into a little blog post that I did. So, okay. yeah. And like, give us the, the cliff notes of that. Like, what should we be using instead of these magic directives? 
So from my perspective, people are saying that magic directives are the way to indicate that some kind of transformation is happening under the hood by a compiler. Okay. And I, I would say that we've actually been doing that for a long time without directives. Yeah. With just functions and, and other things. and, and transform. Yeah, JSX. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and for me, I'd say, you know what? Let, let's use, yeah, sure, let's invent ways to do compiler tricks because it's all tricks. Yeah. yeah. None of it's real JavaScript. So if we're going to invent tricks, my opinion is that they should at least be uh, future-proof for type safety yeah. and especially room to grow because I, I actually messaged this to David Kershid today and I said, hey, I actually thought of you because directives are kind of like the use state Boolean oh. of com yeah. of compilers, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> and I know that he would be like, oh my gosh, use uh, yeah, state no, Boolean, Yeah, right? that's, that's David K. Piano. You say anything about state machines, <laughs> right. he arrives. But in the same spirit, a directive is kind of just like this Boolean. You only have the one choice. It's yeah. either there yeah. Or it's not. Yeah. And and if if anybody wants to try and expand that into okay, well now we have this special colon syntax. And mm -hmm. Now yeah. there now there's directives, but there's also magic functions that change how those directives are. Directive arguments. Right. Yeah. And right, like yeah. okay, we're starting to invent JavaScript again. Right. And in, in that case, I would just say, well, why don't we just use wrappers? Maybe they're not pretty. And, and maybe they maybe they don't scream, hey, a compiler is doing something here. Yeah. But at least they're type safe. They're traceable. They have an import. You can follow them back to a spec, hopefully. Mm -hmm. You know, even JSX looks pretty magical, you know, but but oh, you can yeah. you can go and say, oh well, what's the pragma being used here? Yeah. You can trace that pragma back to, oh, here's the actual transforms that are happening under the hood. So, you know, there's been a lot of talk about creating standards and wanting to share work across the ecosystem. And, and I love that. And there's there's some leeway in personally, like for things like use server and use client. You know, I like the spirit of that, like trying to share uh, and make it as useful as possible for everybody. Yeah. At the same time, I'm building a meta framework and I'm not using use server. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we yeah. support it. Yeah. We support it, but I don't want to use it because I want type safety and I want all this nice stuff. So, you know, I, I'm kind of on the on the team of like, you know, if you want to try and create standards, that's great. Let's make them open and, and make them easy to customize and safe. But I just feel like going down this directive route is going to create a lot of standard proliferation. Yeah. And I don't like that. Yeah. 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 That, that tracks for sure. Cool. Well, yeah. we'll link up the blog post below and people can check it <laughs> yeah, out. Sure. But love hearing that. What other, what other spicy takes you got? Um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're working on React server component support for, okay. for TanStack Start. And we're going to support the normal flavors of server components, how everybody wants to use them. But we have kind of a, a special take on server components that I think is going to be a little bit unique. I'm not going to share too much because we're still in the prototype stage. Okay. We, we know that it, it works, but we just don't have it ready to show off. But the teaser is that uh, we've been talking about server components for a long time now. Yeah. yeah. But in reality, what they really are or what we've seen is server elements. And when you think about like returning a server component from Next or wherever these days, you're not returning a component to the client or, or you know, to render. You're returning an element that's been rendered. Yeah. And I've, I've always had this dream of being able to actually send a component back to the client and, and render it with slots and inversion of control that inversion of control is so important to me because I don't like to assume that the server knows how to do everything. Yeah. I want to be able to send it a task to do this thing on the server that only it can do on the server, but then come back to me and let me continue to do things on the client that I want to do. Okay. Uh, fill in the little yeah, fill the in the fill prints. in the gaps. Yeah. Okay. Just from what I said there, you can probably put the pieces together what we're working on. But uh, it's it's gonna be a, a different a different implementation of server components than I think a lot of people have are used to. Yeah. And it opens up a path to using server components that doesn't require uh, the use client directive mm -hmm. for a majority of use cases. Yeah. There's still use cases for that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah. And, and it does feel like there's so much momentum behind you and your projects right now. Does that feel, is it is it reaching you in that same way that there is a lot of heat on what you're doing, positive um, heat? Yeah, and it's exhausting because a lot of it, 
I mean, I, I know that we've written some blog posts and, and we've put some new projects out there, you know, but a lot of it is, is feels like it's being thrown at us mm -hmm. from social media um, and the community. Like I'd say 95% of the stuff that I've been reading on Twitter is just coming from random people that we've never met or anything. They're just, they've just decided to use Tanstack as this podium to, to speak their thoughts, which is really cool. You know, yeah. in, in some regards, they're, they're doing our marketing work for us. Yeah. On the other hand, it makes me nervous. You know, I want to make sure that it's a positive spin that people, yeah. people are being nice and kind and upholding what I would call like the tan stack tenets of, yeah. of, you know, always making sure we're, we're being nice and, and being positive. That's so, great. Yeah. I like that. What else tan stack? What else would you, is tan stack CMS one day? What, what, what are, what <laughs> no. are the areas that you would love to touch and something that you will never want to touch? We, I don't, I do not want to make a CMS or, <laughs> or, or, or an ORM. Uh, I, we do no, not no wanna... tan stack ORM. Okay. okay. No, we do have one more library that we are prototyping right now. It's in the very early alpha, like pre-alpha stages. Okay. But I, I cannot say anything about what, it. What what area is it in? Me and I, Scott I, are gonna guess. I can't even hint to it. <laughs> Somebody so. in the comments will know. Go, uh, please go yeah. in the comments below, drop what you think it is, and then find the ones and upvote the most ones. Yes. But I, I will say that we stack icons. We are working with a lot of people in the community. So usually we'll just build something internally yeah. first. And then we'll just like, here, we built something new. Mm. This project has big scope. A lot of a lot of people are behind it from outside of the Tansac community. So we've got a huge working group channel in our Discord with a bunch of people who have been invited to this working Interesting. group. Interesting. Yeah. Tanstack format. Tanstack <laughs> V um, plus plus. But but we think it's we think it's gonna be very foundational. Um something that I think People have asked us even saying, we would like you to have this. We would like you to build this. And I ask them why. And a lot of it, some of it comes down to ownership. They just trust us to yeah. do the right thing. Uh, it's got to feel good. With with software. And some of it is technical. A lot of it is technical where it's just like, hey, we're using this tool and it gets the job done. But it's kind of the only choice we have and it, it could be better. And we think that the Tanstack. It's a bundler. Yeah, It's a text editor. We're just gonna, yeah. <laughs> Ten stack I'm just, code. I'm just gonna say sure to all of yeah. that, so that there's a bunch Ten of Ten stack agent. So that there's a red herring uh, in there. Stack, for basically everything. Uh, it's got to be a, a a bundler with AI built into it. A Ten bundler. stack sparkle. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a it's sparkle. Ten stack sparkle is coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I'm really looking forward to that. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate it, and we'll have you back on the show uh, once you got some more to say. You bet. Thanks Peace. so much, Danner. Yep.